Yes. Thank you. <coughs> Hi everyone. I'm sorry I'm so excited and nervous. <laughs> this is Meta Baydar. I'm coming from Istanbul. It's, it was a long way, three hours difference. I hope that you can understand me, not too much sense of humor. So probably my jokes will not make you laugh. And yes, today I will try to explain to you guys mobile DevOps versus backend DevOps. But it's so difficult to tell this because I made this pitch like thousands of times against two or three maximum DevOps engineers in all over the world, but never 150 DevOps engineers in one time. So probably it's going to be difficult, but I will do that. Yeah, uh, I'm not a DevOps engineer or something. I have no technical background, first of all, I need to tell that. Uh, but I had a lot of experiences to, you know, explain to people is the mobile DevOps processes are a little bit different than whatever you guys are using in a conventional, you know, way, uh, what you're using, to, you know, platforms like Jenkins, GitHub Actions, probably most of you are already using those kind of platforms in your, you know, uh, works or jobs. And what could be the right way to run a mobile CI CD process? Yes, today we will just try to talk about that. So, yes, the, the symbol we weren't there when you were speaking about the mobile or the general DevOps tool, so I couldn't see my brand there, so I just kind of offended, I have to say that. It's but already it, on slide. Yeah, okay, anyway, maybe, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we all know DevOps, right? Yeah, that's the DevOps. So what about the mobile? I mean, when it comes to the mobile applications, the iOS applications or the Android applications, are we pretty sure that we all know about the facts of the mobile world? Let's see that. So what could be the possible differences between the mobile DevOps and the backend DevOps or web DevOps, whatever you call it. We just call it conventional DevOps or DevOps is the original one. So what it means when it comes to the mobile. So the app ecosystem. So when we talk about DevOps normally, there is no ecosystem or something, right? But when it comes to the mobile, there is iOS and there is Android. So what, for example, just, just talking about the coding, right? When it comes to the coding, the languages are completely different, first of all. So when it comes to the Objective-C and the Swift, and you're using Kotlin if you're you know, developing your, your application native, and there are cross platforms as well, the Flutter, the React Native, and the other stuff. But this is not the thing, actually. It comes to the ecosystems, for example, if you are developing a mobile application for the iOS, then Apple says that, hey guys, you have to be exclusive. Exclusive on what? Both on hardware and software as well, because you need a Mac OS, and then you need something is called, for example, Xcode. So who cares Xcode, for example, if you are just you know, using another uh, DevOps ecosystem or something, but you have to use it if you are developing an application for the iOS. And there are versions of the Xcode, and there are a lot of different tools that you have to use. But first of all, in order to compile your code, you need a macOS. So this is just a basic difference while you are developing your iOS application. And of course, it comes to you right now, this specialized expertise. Yes, we will already talk about a lot of things between the mobile DevOps and when it comes to the conventional DevOps. But what is the basic difference? So all these platform changes, you know, the languages and the other technical stuff. So what a DevOps engineer need to know about the mobile is actually belongs to the mobile developers. So what we need to do here, the DevOps engineer uh, co-work with the mobile developers in this case because the mobile developer, for example, from the iOS, who is responsible from the iOS development. I'm sorry, you don't hear me, right? Now it's better? Okay, all right, sorry, I'm not used to. Okay, so in this case, we are just you know assuming that the DevOps engineer need to create a pipeline for the mobile project, right? In this case, uh, he or she has to get some information about UIS or Android. 
So what he or she needs to do, directly go to the mobile developer, who is responsible from, in this case, from iOS, and guess the information. But let's try to understand, I don't know what happens. If anyone in this room has ever, you know, uh, engaged or involved in a mobile project, anyone? Wow, it's more than I expected, by the way. Yeah, I would like to hear, by the way, your experiences, but whatever we face so far, everywhere, it's just a conflict. Because mobile people are not, you know, interested too much in DevOps and the DevOps people, as we can see, only maybe 10% of the crowd interested or in the mobile projects. So it brings a lot of conflicts. So actually, in this case, the specialized expertise is already needed for the mobile projects. And binary-based deployment, I, can you, I think you can already expect this because in the mobile project, in order to deploy an application, what is called an application, you have to work with the binaries, not like the normal DevOps because you just deploy the code, right? For the hot fixes or patches you can use. But in this case, uh, for the mobile project, uh, you have to complete your package, which means that you have to create your package and then as a package you have to deploy your application to the testing area or directly to the stores. And another one, the end user deployment challenges. I already talked about you need to create your package, right? You need to sign it and you have to create your application before to deploy that. So when you go to the end users, there must be a process because you have to compile, you have to build your code. In order to do that, there are a lot of processes. As you can imagine, you have to build it. If you're running your tests, you have to run them and it's gonna take some time, but in the same time, you have to sign your code because without signing your code, you cannot deploy it in any environment like the Google Play or uh, the App Store that we all use it, right? On our mobile phones. So in order to do that every single time, if you want to change something on your mobile project, you have to sign it and you have to deploy it. So as you can imagine, the deployment time is not the same with the conventional DevOps process. It's gonna take, as you can imagine, more time than the DevOps standard process. And the code signing complexities, we already mentioned about that. You have to sign your code every single time when you, you know, get a release. But the thing is, it is still more complicated than the standard DevOps process because, for example, especially in the iOS environment, there are a lot of you know type of distribution. I don't want to you know get too much details, but uh, like the development distribution, ad hoc distribution, enterprise distribution, and there are different kind of distribution methodologies. And for every single one of them, you have to use another type of certificate. And in the iOS world, there is another thing which is called the provisioning profile. So there are a lot of, you know, uh, different kind of um, concepts and challenges. And you have to follow every single thing in the iOS or Android in order to manage this CI CD process. So which brings another type of expertise, actually, if you want to, you know, manage the CI CD, the pipeline. So. We just talked about the basic differences between the uh, mobile DevOps and the backend DevOps. So let's try to understand what could be the possible performance indicators in this case. So uh, if we do what, then we can increase our performance, right? So it could be, these are kind of, you know, uh, the Dora metrics that we can understand how to measure the performance, like the lead time for changes, uh, and the deployment frequency and the failure rate change and of course uh, mean time to fix a new release so how long does it take for example this is just a KPI question uh, how long does it take to go from code commitment to code successfully running in production so deployment frequency is uh, the other one is one of the most important one because Generally, when we talk to the customers and, and the big enterprises, for example, um, in our company, uh, we just ask as a first question, 
how is your release frequency? I mean, how frequent you release your application, a new version? So it depends. Of course, there are some big enterprises that have releases once a week, maybe. And there are some other customers that are not mobile first customers, for example, and they say, you know, we just get a release once in every quarter, for example. So it depends also if the mobile application is a business first one, but then it depends also their uh, release cycle efficiency. And um, when it comes to the these uh, indicators, for example, if we look at the standard DevOps process, uh, for example, just, just for the deployment frequency between once per month or once in every six months could be a low DevOps maturity, we call it. And when it comes to, you know, between uh, once per week or once per month, we just call that a medium maturity. And when it comes to high maturity, it should be, you know, on demand. And, and, and also when it comes to the, for example, failure rates, you already see the numbers, so I don't want to read the numbers from the screen, uh, but, but, but the important one, uh, when it comes to the failure rate, one of the main reasons why the companies are investing in DevOps process and why they are using the CICD practices also uh, in the long run to decrease the failure rates, right? So, uh, you know, uh, between uh, 0 and 15% could be a high maturity as a performance indicator. And if it is around 50%, it means that there is a low maturity in terms of DevOps. But when it comes to the mobile, yeah, the picture is a little bit different here because, you know, when it comes to the deployment frequency, uh, maybe, you know, under two weeks uh, release cycle, could be quite good because in the mobile as I already explained it's not just like that to deploy any hotfix or patch because you need to sign and, and there are a lot of processes by the way in the in the in the mobile for example for the deployment that it's not on your hands because you are already stuck to the Apple's or Google's reviews. So those are manual processes and you need to wait for them. So whenever you just, you know, deploy or submit your application to the app stores, sometimes you have to wait for the reviews. And if there's something wrong, you cannot calculate exactly the time how much you have to wait. So all these manual processes actually are binding you and also limiting you. So it's almost quite 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 difficult actually just to decrease you know your release frequency into the days of course there are big enterprises with huge teams and, and working really hard obviously they're trying to they are just trying to decrease the cycle uh, but it's not like on the on the uh, web devops operations and another indicator like the failure rates it's still under five percent it's pretty good uh, but of course, also the test process uh, in the in the mobile DevOps is is quite different than the backend DevOps because you know every single time you have to create a testing package, you have to distribute those packages to the users, and there, as you can imagine, there are a lot of different kind of tests like the functional tests, non-functional tests, the automation tests. So all this process is taking too much time to decrease the release cycle. So. Uh, the indicators are different, obviously, maybe the questions are same, uh, but on the mobile side, the challenges are bringing, you know, um, a lot of uh, gray areas. So just to eliminate all those gray areas and, and to be navigated in an accurate way, uh, you always need the correct tools to use and, and expertise, a lot of expertise. So we hope that in the future, there will be more DevOps engineers in the industry who have the mobile, you know, know-how to run and, and, and just to, you know, navigate the mobile project in more accurate ways. And before the finish, uh, do I have time, by the way? Ah, okay, perfect. So I will just mention about a case study uh, that we have. Um, a company in Turkey, it's also codated in, in NASDAQ. It's a very big e-commerce company, by the way. It's called Hepsibroda. 
So you can see the numbers, it's quite a big company. I think we have some Turkish followers here, so probably they know who is Hepsi Broda. And, and they have over 100 million, you know, products in over 30 categories, 250 million visits, very, very big, just like some, some local Amazon or something. And, and they have over 10 million users. So what are the challenges here? So they have some management issues on the DevOps pipeline, creating new us users and assigning different roles to the team members. Because a lot of teams, you know, as you can imagine, big company, big app. And an uptime problem that we have seen, even though the infrastructure is solid, they were using um, on-premises. Uh, their solution on Jenkins. They had a very, very complex pipeline, by the way, they were managing. Uh, but uh, even the, the, the machines, uh, they were working locally and they were quite actually pretty solid, I can tell. Uh, but introduce a downtime during the software updates and, and, and when the operating system, they had a bug. And another problem with the pipeline running static analysis tools for every merge request, it caused a problem and for testing as well. And their build times were not okay uh, because of some complexities and some caching problems uh, in their workflows uh, they faced. And for the deployment uh, to the Google Play Alpha channels, uh, they had other issues as well because they had some internal KPIs which were not exactly matching to their workflows on the publishing process uh, to the Google Play, their application. So they faced all these problems and, and, and what they had, I'm so sorry, this is a kind of product pitching by the way, uh, but I will just try to turn it around like that. Yeah, uh, they, they started to yeah, use our product, by the way, and, and we just try to actually standardize their processes because they were focused too much, by the way, on the uh, standard testing processes, but actually, yes, for example, they had automation tests, they had their test scripts, but they were not exactly tracking their coverage rates. Uh, because uh, the, the, the coverage of their test groups were not enough. So they just realized this. They had the data, by the way, it's not a small company. But when they started to keep track of it, they understand that they actually need to increase the test coverage, first of all. And then they saw that the efficiency is increasing. And also we started to manage the macOS because the macOS management, I am not an expert on that, by the way, but I'm not sure if the favorites of the infrastructure people is just taking care of a macOS. Uh, so as far as we understand, it's always a problem for them. So they're hesitating to take care of the macOS in their infrastructure. So we started to manage their, you know, build machines, uh, which means the runners. So after we, you know, changed all the runners, all the images, and we just, you know, configured every single runner based on mobile pipeline, not a standard pipeline, but a mobile pipeline. Also their build speed has increased significantly. And then of course, we just realized that actually after, after a couple of months, obviously not one day, uh, we increase their you know mobile maturity from medium levels to high levels. I'm so sorry for that by the way I would like to share with you guys Detailed numbers for that, but it's not you know permitted by them So we just respect them not to you know share the details with you But I can tell you right now their failure rates are in single digits and, and they're quite happy with the product. And thank you very much. And I'm so sorry if I said something wrong, by the way, uh, for listening. Should I take any question or something here? I think that's your answer. Um, questions, yes. Does anybody have questions for Matthew? Yes, they do. So just give me one moment, because I should have made you wear this. So let's just do a little swap around there. Can you put that on for yeah, me? Sure. Get that on? Yeah, of course. Yeah, oh, let me turn it on. Okay. There we go. If you just want to hold that there, that'll be fine. Does that work? Test. Yeah. Maybe here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Another dad joke. I've got to stop doing that. 
Thank you very much. Um, I've got two questions. Yeah. Um, you implied at the end that when you put um, the mobile um, images on the build macOS machines, uh, that, that's all you did. So uh, were they only doing mobile, or can the mobile build images do back-end as well, because they have such high requirements that they can meet the back-end requirements as well? Well, honestly speaking, we dedicated those runners to the mobile project. But in theory, yes, they can be also work for the backend projects as well. But in our case, we dedicated them completely to the mobile projects, but for both Android and the iOS. Okay. Thank you. And um, the other question is just to understand uh, what, how does the company have 100 million products? Uh, what, what sort of things? Uh, it's an online marketplace. I'm so sorry. I just thought that I mentioned about that. It's just an online market. It's a kind of local Amazon.com or something. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Question there. Any more questions? Got a few more. Okay. We'll go to you, sir. Uh, hi. My name is Pritvi uh, Thomas. I work for a bank as a consultant. But uh, before working for the bank, I was working for a music company in South uh, London. And they had the same sort of. Uh, issues, first of all, they didn't have resources, and all the limitation you said, but they were not interested in using the native uh, features of mobile development. So what I did was, uh, we tried to piggyback on their website, which was mobile friendly. So you can create a container application in both operating systems and can use it. So you wouldn't have any of those issues, and every time, just like a website, you can deploy whatever you want. So thank you very much, by the way. So you were using a cross-platform application to just, you know, mitigate? It was, it was a Node.js application, which was for the website. Okay. But you have Android and SD, uh, Apple SDK. So you develop an application once, and in the configuration, you can specify the, the host website itself. So you always, so it's like a container. But yeah. your changes are going into the website, but your mobile application is just using the website. It's like a mobile-friendly website. Okay. So you don't have to have any of these issues. and. Uh, you can all, always deploy your changes to your website, we all know that. So you have a best of both worlds. <coughs> Only limitation is if you wanted to use a native features of mobile, then it's not possible. That's of course. the limitation. Of course, yeah, you're right. OK, any questions in the back before we go to the front? I'm going to go over here to you, sir. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nicole. I work as head of the ops here in London. I have a quick question regarding your change failure rate. I know there's a single number there, but is the difference between change failure rates in Android versus Apple when you're doing this requirements or in this case study of yours? No, it is, it is just a general one, by the way, in this case, if you mean. Uh, but if you are asking the main reason how they are actually, you know, decreasing their failure rates, just because of the increasing, you know, mobile maturity, because they started to use the test more frequently, and they started to keep track of the results, and they started to understand the root causes, and the feedback route that they started to apply, they started to, you know, decrease the rate, that's it. But if you're asking exact numbers here regarding to the Android or iOS, maybe I misunderstood the question. No, I think that is correct. You're talking about the testing pipelines and yes, exactly. Trying to understand, um, you know, before the improvements came in, was it more failure rates? In yes, process? yes, that is absolutely. Obviously, since it was already a very big enterprise, we cannot tell them that we, you know, drastically changed their, you know, testing failure rates. But even a few points of increase in their failure rates was a very important step for them because you know it was not the main reason why they deployed our product for example in their enterprise the main reason was just bring the devops you know culture also into the mobile teams because the main problem as i always say just to increase you know the mobile know-how on the devops people and just to increase a little bit devops know-how on the mobile people because they ultimately need mobile people in order to engage with the mobile project because the especially the ios 
only for the um, not only for the Android but especially for the iOS it is it is so complex for the people to follow every single update on that side sorry um, let's, let's let somebody else ask a question a hand please um, you can catch up with the speaker later okay so we've got a couple more um, let's go, let's go over here Hi, uh, you mentioned uh, you know the challenges associated with the mobile DevOps side, right? Yeah. But there may be few advantages or you know convenience on the mobile DevOps like, compared to the conventional one. Can you please share with those things? The advantage, mm, well, honestly speaking, this is the first time that I think about it. If there is any, uh, I don't know. Maybe. I have one, but I'm not sure whether it's correct. Like, you know, in Please. the world, it's Kotlin is the preferred one at the moment. Like, you have just Kotlin is the, you know, I'm so sorry, I have difficulty to hear you. Everyone is writing Kotlin. <laughs> okay. Yeah, in Android, I think the Kotlin and Java is the most preferred at the moment. I think Kotlin is winning at the moment. Okay. Uh, For the native ones, yes. So what I'm asking, right, I mean, that's my assumption, I'm not right. Okay. Uh, in, in Android, most of the apps are currently being developed on Kotlin. So you have just one programming language and probably one runtime to look after. Whereas in the mobile, the conventional one, it can be Python, Scala, Java, anything, right? Yes, for the natives, you're right, but also there is an increasing trend for the cross-platform, you know, applications. So maybe that one is just, you know, uh, just you know, kind of treating your theory in this case. But yeah it's maybe but it's much more about the development rather than the devops or ci cd right can we say that i think um let's that one yeah thank you okay last one tim so short two-part question were you able one to part. get more than um one build running on a particular executor agent and how potentially were you able to do that? Are you asking about concurrency or yes. more than one project? Okay, so yes. Some mobile builds before, yeah. it's only ever been, I can do one build at a time, even though the machine would have plenty available resources. Well, honestly speaking, I just get it like an infrastructure question because, yeah, for example, parallel builds or just sending two PRs in the same time. Uh, well, you know, especially on the macOS, if you're using, for example, bare metal, yes, you can just, you know, run maybe 8 to 10. I don't know the limit. I don't know even if there is a limit or something. But if you are following the best practices, the best practices would say probably to use VMs even on the macOS and using just two because Apple allows so. So using two VMs on one bare metal Mac and every single VM just allows you to run one operation. So which means that, just an example, a Mac Mini, just imagine that, two VMs on one Mac Mini and one PR or one push per each. That's how it is working. This is just the best practice if you want to run your operation in the most efficient way. Brilliant, okay. Sorry, I know there's some more hands. Um, I think um, if you can ask Matthew in the break, um, your questions, I'm sure he'll be delighted to answer them. Um, Tim, Timothy, I was gesturing at him and saying, is, is it a short question? And he comes and gives me a two-parter. Yes or no? <laughs> anyway, ah, yeah. um, Mate, thank you so much. Brilliant talk. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much.